We've got a chance to visit with the owner of the Milwaukee Brewers, Mark Adonacio. And opening day is always special. I see you got your uh, Joe pin on in memory of your father. This, uh, I'm sure the emotions are running wild, good. Uh, bad memories, uh, great memories. Uh, what, what's going through your mind today, Mark, as you sit for another opening day? Well, one thing, Brian, uh, uh, you're becoming the master of the overstatement. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, as much as I like to talk on opening day, what I used to uh, just cherish was you know, my dad singing national anthem every year. And uh, you know, last year we ran a video of him. He just passed away a couple months before. It was very emotional for me. And, this year emotional in a different way to have my sons Dan and Mike who are sitting down here with me along with Debbie and Dan's new wife Elizabeth uh, to sing this year in honor of my dad that is uh, very special for me in a more of a heartwarming kind of way. Man, Mark, talk about your the feelings that uh, you know you, you sit here on opening day. This the crowd is a capacity crowd. You know the fans here in Milwaukee. I think they bought into the whole the whole thing where uh, the team's looking to rebuild a little bit. Well, and uh, you know, starting with a couple guys at the top of the order here, um, you, know, you see Jonathan Villar, and you know, they're bringing a lot of energy. Villar sends one deep to left field. That's got a chance, and it is gone. Welcome to Milwaukee, Senor. A home run for Villar. Makes it 4-3. All right. Always good to homer in your home debut with your new team but especially in front of the boss and, and, the headset. Well, and the rebuild is looking good so far <laughs> right Mark especially so. when uh, Brian sets up the uh, the pitch and I say yeah we bring me some energy here <laughs> <laughs> all right good moment there for Jonathan VR not known as a big home run hitter but he'll take his first of the season the Brewers have gone deep twice off Madison Baumgartner and now Ryan Braun stepping in and we're visiting with Mark Adonacio and uh, Mark as we look at guys like Braun and Luke Croy and uh, some of the names there aren't many that have uh, been here through the years but what kind of conversations are you having with guys like Braun and Luke Croy guys that have been around for a little while and have seen this organization grow as it has. You know uh, Ryan and Jonathan both have very positive energy about this Ryan uh, mentioned during spring training this is uh, the best energy in our clubhouse since uh, 2011. And Jonathan, very first day, one of our young double A catchers came up to Jonathan and asked for advice. I think it's very engaging for you know the veterans who wasn't that long ago they were looking for advice. They're now you know dispensing the advice. I think it uh, feels good. As Braun goes into center field, a base hit. So the hits are coming. Mark, were you able to address the ball club uh, before the game today? Is that something you do no. typically? No, I really leave that to uh, right, uh, Rock right before you know spring training, as you know, I do that. And I don't. Once the season starts, it's uh, Craig's clubhouse, and I uh, I don't usually end of the season. Last series, I'll speak to the team. We look around uh, Miller Park, uh, outstanding. It looks beautiful ballpark here today. Uh, talk about some of the changes that we can uh, notice. You know, as fans come to the ballpark here uh, here at Miller Park. Yeah, one of the. Uh, by the way, today we have Larry Bear, the Giants uh, CEO here, and uh, he was commenting on how special the park is. And uh, this park shows great at big events like this. Uh, this year we have uh, improved retail, uh, both in the uh, hot corner there, and also more importantly behind home plate, we've expanded things. There's an unbelievable, I do say, cap display. There's about 40 or 50 caps on display, and everyone looks awesome uh, under lights. Uh, we have a new thing for kids down. Uh, we have an improved uh, kids zone uh, downstairs and, and upstairs. We have a, a new uh, executive suite upstairs. You know, people like to come to the ballpark to entertain, and we've set things up for that. Lucroy flies to right. That's the first out of the inning. We saw have a Brewers tree truck this year to go dispense ice cream <laughs> to kids, and I had more than my fair share of ice cream last <laughs> night in an event here. <laughs> I'm all in on the tree truck. Yeah. Pizza, pizza, Palermo's pizza, the official yeah. frozen pizza of the Brewers, and <laughs> vanilla ice cream for me. The two uh, two killers. Debbie uh, is very disciplined. She does not fall for the ice cream tree truck. But she's okay with you, right? <laughs> That's why you got to sneak off on your own. <laughs> I have to kind of. When she was downstairs in the store last night, I was uh, I was grabbing some ice cream. Mark Adonacio <laughs> joining us here, the Brewers owner, as we 
Move through the bottom of the third. The Brewers scoring some runs off Madison Baumgartner. Three on the board. <laughs> and our score 4 3 is Chris Carter is at the plate. And uh, back to the baseball story, though, Mark, you. One of the well really the only free agent you guys have pursued heavily was Chris Carter and the the payroll is significantly down from last year but your thoughts on that are more just the personnel that the Brewers have as opposed to maybe a plan to try to push the payroll to a certain number or some parameters that you've said. Yeah David Stearns did a good job in the uh, media briefing today uh, describing how where we are as a team dictated the payroll rather than coming up with some number. Uh, there were a couple other free agents we looked at and uh, I'd say dabbled in. I wouldn't say pursued aggressively, uh, but you know it, it was really more of a uh, a uh, comprehensive plan. So Aaron Hill was in the index circle here. We picked up uh, a chunk of his money in order to uh, get at one of their uh, other younger prospects and and a Chase Anderson who'll be pitching you know this week. So you know it it's really more player focused and what falls out of what they're doing in terms of years of control and whatnot. You know, Chris Carter we could control for three more years uh, or this year plus two years. So that's kind of what, what goes on there. And um, and then the number is what it is. You will see the number the payroll number going up over the years as we bring a bunch of these young players together and then keep them together and even looking out to like 2020. And yeah, Mark uh, Craig Council has said he's not putting any limits on this ball club. What are your expectations of this team this year. Well the expectations this year are so far being borne out in the first innings of this game. I, I really expect us to play good exciting baseball you know, whether that translates into a win or not. You know we're playing a team here that has three world championships. We have uh, World Series MVP Madison Bumgarner and we've got a real game and that's what uh, that's why I expect to see out of the team this year. We're exactly what we're seeing today. Talk to us a little bit about David Stearns. Uh, he and Matt Arnold uh, they are also in celebration mode I would imagine this is their first opening day as general manager and assistant general manager and quite a milestone for those two individuals as well to now run an organization and can you just talk to us about the process with David Stearns and then as it's moved all the way through the offseason through spring training to now what what have you seen from the 31 year old general manager. Well David uh, David himself said earlier today that it's all going to probably sink in after this. It's a bit of a blur opening day. I remember my first opening day as an owner was a blur. Mm. They told a second is going to cut down Carter and uh, if you describe Chris Carter's running style a like blur would not be how you describe it. <laughs> Good one. Good one boss. But. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we're going to have listen we're going to have a few of those things this year. Uh, Craig was telling me before that and I'm not sure Craig would want him to try to take that base but Craig was saying that this year uh, also as an organization we can try being more aggressive try doing things and see what works doesn't work uh, push players to test their limits and uh, probably so Chris's base running limit there. But David you know uh, what's great about David is back back to when we interviewed him he was really poised and. Uh, you know he's so his demeanor and his poise and his approach it, he's actually the same guy today you know that he was back six months ago when we interviewed him he uh, is very comfortable surprisingly comfortable in this role and, and frankly uh, you know, what do they say in the big leagues act like you've been there right. you know, he uh, for the day he stepped into his position he acted like he'd been there and uh, he's developed a lot of confidence up and down the organization. And, and you know I've talked a lot about energy but he's brought a lot of uh, energy and enthusiasm not only to our baseball ops but even within business ops I mentioned uh, we have record number of sponsorships this year and uh, as Aaron Hill takes a call strike three that on takes that, us on cue <laughs> to the end of the year. Mark great job thanks a lot we, we always love seeing you especially on opening day you and your family a true family ownership and uh, as popular as ever and we look forward to great things this year. Thanks Brian. Thanks Brock. Uh, Thank you. Have some fun this year.